our these are computer service department people to know about this issue. Hopefully they can sort it out. Okay. All right, so, okay, we stop at TSC which is a thyristor switch uh, capacitor, okay, which is widely used in the uh, transmission line and the utility side, okay. And then uh, we have this, uh, okay, simulating demo. All right, we have the simulating demo, and then uh, we show that, you know, by turning on with a capacitor, then we can actually change the uh, reactive power, okay, injecting the what we call uh, reactive power to the grid. So therefore, it will change the power flow of the transmission line. So for capacitor, right, okay, TSC, they usually work in either on and off, okay. Very rare that will have the condition, okay, that will work halfway, okay, for TSC, all right. Like in these examples, uh, yeah, we have uh, put in the 100 uh, uh, VAR. Okay, so the moment we turn on, right, we can see that, okay, he will have a negative uh, uh, 100, okay, to the grid. Okay, so now we move on to the TCR. Okay, so TCR on the other hand, uh, it is to control the reactor. Okay, as you can see from the diagram here, instead of a capacitor, okay, so you just change it to an inductor. So again, it does the same job, okay, by injecting this uh, reactive power to the grid, okay, and you can actually control them, you know, how much, uh, what we call this uh, reactive power you want to inject. Now there are three equations here, all right? So the first equation is the instantaneous reactor current. That means it's the Vm, which is the peak voltage, divided by omega 2 pi f of the line frequency, multiplied by the reactor, okay, which is in Henry. And then, of course, you have a sine omega t. Uh, t is the time, okay? at which second and minus the sign at your firing angle. So you will get the current at that particular point of time T. And then the second calculation is just to calculate the RMS, okay, reactor current. Okay, the RMS value of the reactor current, which is the voltage again, divided by uh, this voltage, is the RMS voltage, huh? okay? And this voltage is the peak voltage. So don't mix up, huh? 
okay, a uh, very common mistake student made is that they thought V, okay, or most of the time you thought this is RMS. So for instantaneous, okay, for instantaneous, you use the big wattage. Okay, for RMS, the V is the RMS wattage. Okay, the V is the RMS wattage. And the rest is just, you know, substituting in the alpha, which is the firing angle, for you to get the current that flow through this reactor. All right. And another equations, okay, which is the opposite of it, which is the reactor emitter, which is not commonly used. All right, not commonly used uh, for this uh, uh, calculation. Mostly we will use the second one. All right, but these are the three main equations. Okay, that you will see how the TCS, the firing angle, okay, changes the current that is flowing through the inductor. Okay, so now what is changing is that all right, you will notice by changing the firing angle, right? It's no longer like what we saw last time. Huh? Okay, it is cutting, chopping, okay, the what we call uh, the waveform. Okay, uh, you can say it vertically. Okay, instead of that, it's actually chop it off horizontally. Okay, it chop off certain part and leave like in this case the, the dark color it chop off the bottom part okay like let's say i chop off this part huh? so you will see the waveform like that okay so this is how uh the difference uh, okay between the acac controller and the tcr now to see more clear okay of course uh you use a uh, uh, simulation that's the the best way uh, okay to see how this thing behave okay in a simulation so that you can change the value play around with it okay you can see the difference now in this case uh, again we will put okay the two thyristor okay power by i mean uh trigger by this clock all right and then we connect to the reactor and this reactor we just put like 100 milli Henry, okay, and of course we have the what we call this the uh, the source, and we measure the current, okay. We measure the current flow through, and then uh, we also measure the wattage, and we can see the uh, real power and the reactive power, and of course this will be the RMS current. Okay, of the inductor. That's why I said uh, this equation is much more relevant and important. Okay, when you in you come to actual design. Okay, so when you run this, okay, in this case, uh, yeah, uh, magnitude one, one over a uh, hundred, and then we do the firing angles. Okay. Now, you will notice that uh, the difference between AC and AC is that the firing angle starts from zero, right? Zero degree, 10, 20, uh, until 180, right? Until you go to, to the end, uh, I mean, until pi. But in this case, you will notice that it won't start from zero. You start from 90 degree, okay? 90 degree plus, okay, your alpha. Why? Remember, because the current and the wattage for this inductor is already okay lagged by 90 degree okay current one because this is current flowing through ac ac converter right okay we are chopping the wattage okay we are chopping the wattage that's why you see the waveform differently now this one is the current so in this case, let's say I want to do a firing angle at 30 degrees, so you have to plus 90 degrees. Okay, plus 90 degrees. Okay, so this one is the wattage. The wattage, no change, huh? but you change the current, the I, L. You change the current. Okay, you can see this is the firing angles. 
Okay, change the. Okay, so it, it looks like you are chopping, you know, like I say, uh, horizontally. Okay, you chop off, you know, for example, I chop off this and, you know, only the top is remaining, the bottom is, uh, it has been chopped off. So it go down, so it, it see something like that. You will see something like that. Okay. And then, uh, okay, let's look at the simulation. Okay. All right. So in this case, okay. Uh, okay, 30 degree, right? Okay. In the previous one, I used radian. Uh, this one, I used degree. Okay. So uh, if you run it, and you will see that, okay, for 30 degree, okay, now the RMA current is around 3 amps. Okay, around 3 amps. And then uh, our real power is only 2 watt. And then the reactive power is 651. Obviously, there is no resistive load, right? So you don't actually have any real power. I mean, got also very low. Lah. Then we will have this uh, reactive power. And if we look at the waveform. Okay, so it should, you know, because this is in RMS, uh, the peak you see is like it reaches 5M, okay, but this is in RMS, all right, that's why, you know, slightly lower a bit. Uh. So it's around like 3 amps, okay, so now if we decrease the firing angle to 10, All right, now you will see that, okay, the current increases to 5. Because you chop less, okay, you chop less. And of course, yeah, if I just... Uh, zero degree. All right, so I didn't cut anything. All right, zero degree means that I let all the current be passed through, like I said, okay, the voltage and current by default is already 90 degree, okay, in, uh, you know, in, diff, in, in this, uh, what we call phase shift, lah, because of the inductive, uh, what we call this uh, inductive uh, nature. So that is the reason why we have to start off with 90 degree and plus. So let's say if I want to increase onto 60 degrees, so the current should go lower. Okay, now the current is lower. Of course, the current is lower, reactive power also lower, right? So this is how you control the reactive power. Okay, so it becomes something like that. So this is the current. Okay, so yeah, it's around 0 0.57 amps. So by doing that, changing the firing angle, you change the current and the current change of current, right? You actually change uh, the reactive power. Okay, and how, react, how much reactive power you can deliver even let's say at zero degree, you are delivering 100% of this uh, reactive power, right? So you can put zero again. I forgot to see how much. I think it's quite high. Okay. Yeah, it's 1,000 something. Okay, 1,000 something. So when you use this to chop off for current, and voltage, okay, so they work differently, huh? so don't be confused, but you can see the configuration is the same, 
Okay, the only difference is that this one is connected not to the resistive load, inductive load, and then we measure the voltage. All right, so this will cover the two uh, TSC and the uh, TCR. Okay, that is uh, using this thyristor as a main switching device to control the uh, reactive power. Okay, so right, so I think we move on first. Unless we got time, maybe we choose one to to practice here. Okay. Now, the next one is to see where is this thing apply. Okay, now this thing, okay, uh, the combination use, uh, okay, of this, you know, TSR or TCR, okay. Now the S and C, uh, the only difference is that S is on and off. C, you can control any firing angle. That's the basic definition of it. So in the real uh, application, this is actually applicable to the transmission line. Okay, to the the top one here is the transmission line. Okay, uh, usually it is like 275 kV and onward lah, or plus minus ah, is definitely on the HV side. Okay, on the HV side, and then you will see that they always have a transformer. Why? Because they don't connect all this directly to 275 kV. So they will have a step down transformer. Okay, so they can either step down to 11 kV, 33 kV, and so forth. They don't step down to LV. Yeah? So they're from HV, okay, and they step down to MV. Okay, step down to MV. So LV is anything that is less than 1,000 1, volt. So in practice, this is how it looks like. It's usually situated at the switch yard. Okay, usually near the, uh, what we call the PMU in Malaysia, lah, Penjawa Maso Utama, the, the substation that actually receive or transmit the transmission line. Okay, so it's the, the, the higher, up in the hierarchy of the substation. So usually they will have a control room. They will have the thyristor valve. Ah, we see all here, they are actually quite big. Ah. I mean, they're stacked together also that they can handling, you know, uh, thousand of watt. So usually they put inside the, the room here. And then you will notice that, okay, like this is SVC transformer. Uh, these are the transformer, okay, that will step down 275 to 11 kV. So, you know, the power can deliver through this transformer. Okay. And then we will have uh, the reactor. Okay. Uh, the reactor looks something like that. It's always like donut circle in form. Quite easy to recognize. And they always come in, in three. So you can see that they are one phase, two phase, and three phases. And uh, capacitor. Okay. Capacitor usually in a rectangular form in a block form again okay there is always come in three three phases so from here we can see that oh these are the this one okay and then the reactor is this one and of course they can have a fixed capacitor or just any other load and of course uh, they will also have harmonic filter which we are not discussing here because when we alter the waveform right like this the current it's also no longer sine wave, right? So they will actually have harmonics, okay? They will have harmonics, and in this case, usually it's all what harmonics they have. So how to get rid of all these uh, harmonics is basically they have a harmonic filter here, okay? While you are controlling, you know, the reactive power, you are generating a harmonic at the same time. So they will actually have a harmonic filter. So again, the Typical harmonic filter is a single tune uh, harmonic filter that is used in the switch yard. You can see that again. You will see that this is the, uh, what we call this, an uh, inductor or reactor. And uh, in series with a, uh, what we call this, a uh, uh, capacitor. So that form, okay, uh, the harmonic filter. And you can see, depend on how many of them, uh, 
usually one okay uh, of this filter will filter one part of the harmonics okay depend on for example you know uh, nine harmonic or eleven harmonic okay so the power of this harmonic filter it depend on the size uh. if you look at it right this is definitely much more smaller lower power than those you know uh, the, the reactor here so this is how uh, this what we call uh, T T TCR and TSC okay it apply okay in the real electrical industry okay now let's look into the real one okay in Malaysia so I have put up the uh, okay 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 in Malaysia we have one of these in Yongping okay in Yongping let me see uh, I think I still have the this document Okay, so uh, we have this. Okay, so there are three SVC. Okay, providing the voltage control, power oscillation damping in Malaysia. Okay, at 275 kV transmission line. Okay, so you can see this is a transformer. Okay, very huge transformer. This is the people are uh, the, the the height of a person. So from here you can roughly gauge, you know the sizes of this uh, SVC and uh, quite obvious. OK, we have all these. Uh, reactor, 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 OK, big and small, the other side. And we have this since 1991, OK, and uh, in fact, Malaysia is one of the first Southeast Asia country to have this back then. You no, know? it was considered high tech already, you know. Now most of these, uh, I mean, I think we have only two or three in Malaysia only, not many. OK, of course, you don't compare to first world country. Every single line of uh, transmission, they can control how much power OK, they can deliver. So this is the capacity. OK, the, they tell you it's at Yongping North substation. OK, it's 100 megawatt inductive and 100 megawatt capacitive. OK, at 275 kV. Back then, 275 is the highest. Uh, OK, back then in 1991, now we already have this uh, 500 kV. OK, so you look at the schematic, right? Uh, this is how it looks like. Oh. OK, they have uh, 275 kV. OK, connect to a transformer. OK, then this transformer is 100 MVA. And then it connected to TCR, TCR. Uh, they got two TCR. OK, so combined together is over 100 a little bit and uh, they also got two uh, TSC okay and then uh, this is the harmonic filter okay so this one is filter of fifth harmonic and seven harmonic okay so don't confuse between the filter and this one uh. so the you know the thyristor AC controller is only for T TCR and TSC but obviously if you put this thing on right it will generate harmonic and you need to get rid of it. OK, so of course you need to do some study. Lah. You have to do the uh, harmonic analysis, looking at, you know, there are quite a lot of things you need to know before you can decide, uh, you know, what are the filters? OK, what are the sizes and so forth? OK, to 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 solve this problem. So this is a single line diagram of one uh, S, uh, SVC. And uh, OK, these are the, the diagrams. OK, that is look from the top. Lah. OK, let's look from the top. OK, the station layout. Lah. OK, so you can see if I zoom in here. OK, so there are two SVC. So these are the transmission line coming in. Now you can see there are one, two, three. OK, uh, these are the reactor. OK. And these are the 
capacitor, okay, capacitor and reactor. So one of these, okay, it consists of this of one SCV, and of course there are filters, okay. Let me see. I think the filter should be here, lah. Okay, this filter is relatively small. Okay, it's only like seven, you know, five or ten compared to this one. So if you look at the picture, it should be this place. Ah. You can see the size ah, of the reactor and the size of this. You roughly can know this should be the uh, harmonic filters. Okay. Okay, and then of course, uh, these are the control rooms. The white color one is the control rooms. Ah. Okay, you can, these, these are the doors. Okay, so they're all connected to all the switch gear. Switch gear, switch gear, and of course, the electronic part lah, that will control the firing angles. Mm. Okay, so they will control the firing angles. All right, so if you want to see where this thing it is, right, I actually put the uh, the link here. Okay, let's see, uh, it should be able to work. Uh. Okay, PMU Yong Ping. Okay, PMUs, like I said, Penjawang Maso Utama is wherever transmission line come in, right? This is the first station. Okay, the rest is PPU and PE already. And this one is located at uh, Yong Ping, okay? The, the substation, okay, is here. Let me see. I think this is only the PMU. Well, quite blur. Uh, not very clear. Okay, of the place. Okay, so this is the PMU. Can I see already or zoom max already? And then it connected to wait uh, This is the highway. It connected all the way to the south of Yongping. There is another. Yeah, I should actually put also the link, uh, otherwise cannot find it. This one. Anyone from Johor? You know, you should be able to recognize the places. There is a very big substation up there. Try to locate it, see. Can I... So the substation is only in Johor. Uh? There are other places like KL don't have? Have, have. Got one. I mean, I just zoom in. Uh, okay. Now you see along the, the this highway, right? This is the major BMU of Yongping which will take in 275 and you know step down to 132 and supply to the entire Yongping. If this thing trip, uh, the whole Yongping no power. Though. And to answer your question, right, not every substation there will actually there will have SVC. Uh, okay. Uh, it actually depends on the needs uh, because you know we are not so developed yet. Okay. SVC allow you to control the power in and out. Uh. Mm. So Joho is actually one of the gateway. Uh, okay. They, uh, I really don't know why they choose that location. There must be a reason for that. Okay, they require some form of uh, power control flow, maybe to Malacca or where. Okay, that's why they choose a point there. So the main in incoming uh, is actually here. Okay, you can see PMU. 
okay, there's always a big building, okay, uh, store all the control and the officers, and the site here, this is what we call the Swiss yard, okay, and the SVC is not located here, like I said, it's located down here, lo. okay, it's located down here, In fact, you can actually tap uh, at any point of the 275 KV. It just depends on, you know, which part, like for example, in the thing, okay, this is the 275 KV, right? The whole line are from one point to another point. You can tap in the middle, okay? Uh, you can tap anywhere, or as long as you inject, you know, you change this point, right? You are changing the flow of the power. Okay, you are changing the flow or the power. You want the power to flow this direction or that direction. Ah, uh, that's why it is usually in between. Of course, it has to be strategic. Uh, okay, locate at a place that you know is feasible. And the picture you see is here. It's not very clear. Okay, you can see that uh, the, the along the stretch here. Uh, okay, they will have this uh, SVC in Johor. Uh, it's quite old already. La. It's in 1991, you know, so now how many years already? So two years. There. Yeah, separated uh, during us. Why they separated like said? Okay, maybe I, I, I show you. Okay. SVC is to control the power flow, right? This is the line. Uh. This is a line all the way to, let's say, one substation. And this is another line to another substation. OK, so this is one source uh, of the line. And this is another source from another generator. So both generator, right? In between, they have small, small substation, which is what called bus. Uh, OK, we have different, different bus that will connect to the load. OK, some small town like, you know, Yongping or whatever town, they need power, okay? But they want to control how much power I want to take from this source and how much power I want to take from this source. How do you control that? You control using this SVC. You control using this SVC. If I turn off everything, right, the power just flow according to Ohm's law, okay? They just flow according to Ohm's law. Of course, here also got some buses that is connect to you know some other small town okay that's why it is always in between okay all the substation and two sources you i mean you can uh, you want to put here but i don't see any generation plan uh, just in front of them before go they have svv you know, right so it's usually put in between so you can control how much real power you come here how much reactive power you want to go here Remember in the last class, I show you all these things. Ah, this uh, MATLAB program. So you have two source, right? Okay, now you see these are the impedance. Okay, by, you know, changing the angle and the voltage at both sides, right? You're actually controlling how much power you want to deliver from one side to another side, you see, like this. So in order to do this, you will usually have this SVC in the middle of the line, SVC. OK, so by changing the SVC, injecting the, the active and reactive power, you actually, OK, changing the voltage and the current, OK, at both sides. So you can control, like for, for example, I want to take both power from source 2 to source 1, active and reactive. OK, or I want to take only the real power from source 2 to source 1, but reactive power from source 1 to source 2. So you can have a very flexible of controlling, you know, how the power one you want to flow. So you can control and uh, dip, dispatch the energy in a much more efficient way. Now, in theory, right, you open textbook, uh, you tell uh, this source 1, this source 2, you change the voltage, you change the angle, you change the power, then they give you the equation. 
Then I ask you to think about it, how to make it in the real world. Shit, right? First class owner also cannot solve the real problem. Uh, the actual answer is <laughs> SVC. <la. laughs> okay, so you are utilizing capacitor, inductor or reactor and the switching firing angle to do that. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's good that Malaysia have one so we can, uh, you, you know, at least uh, you, you know that all oh, that we our country have this uh, SVC. Okay. And I the other one is the nearest to us is the in the KL. Uh, this one for those who stay nearby, if one day you pass through, uh, you can probably tell your friend that, you know, this is SVC. Uh, Non-engineer student may know, don't know what is that. I mean, at least as engineer student, you will be able to appreciate that. Lah. TMB uh, use a code uh, with four letters. KUL Kuala Lumpur N is North. So you will find KUL East, KUS South. There are four points in KL, four main power incoming. You cut one, KL still got power. So it's considered very strong. Uh, okay, so you can see that, okay, this is a much more clear picture. You will see a control room here. Okay, a control room. And obviously you see there are reactor, reactor, reactor. Okay, uh, reactor, reactor, reactor. We have the capacitor, capacitor, capacitor. Okay, and we have a transformer. We have a transformer. Okay, so obviously this is one set of uh, SVC. This is another set of SVC. And this is a typical switch yard. Okay, where the transmission lines comes in. Uh. It's a very huge one. KL now is one of the, the, the largest. And you can see, uh, this is a transmission tower. Okay, uh, these are all the transmission tower. All right, you can see it come, connect, come, connect come connect to all the, these are all the switch yet. You see, because it's high voltage, ma, you cannot use a very small switches to see. So they are using the mechanical switch, okay? So they space up to a few meter, you know, otherwise they will got the arc flash, okay, happening. So you can see that there are a few transmission towers, okay? And uh, this is the highway, all right? This is the highway. So it's quite near, it's uh, the Seri Damansara there. La. I'm not really familiar with this area. Okay, Kepong, okay. So when you drive through, you can see it's along the highway. Okay, Kuala Sangahang Highway. I also don't know where's the place. <laughs> so you can see this substation uh, serve quite a lot of things. 275, 132, 33, and 11 kV. So you can actually, uh, yeah, see it. Okay, and this one got SVC. Uh, the rest they don't have like for example you want to see the KL is uh, okay uh, okay K U L E okay so this is the east side of the substation PMU okay 275 until this one then where is it uh, it's somewhere here okay and you can see that, okay, it's just a, you know, transmission tower and switch yard, right? Small switch yard. They, there's no like, just now I show you that they got a huge uh, reactor, right? And they come in three, no, right? So meaning that there is, there is no, uh, what we call this uh, SVC here. There's no SVC, okay, for this uh, uh, substation. So they are top four. Okay, uh, substation in KL. So, yeah, KL South, KL North East, North East South West. Uh, are yeah. West. Okay, you can see West. I think almost near to Klang already. Other uh, place, KL West. Okay, you just type K. You have to know the code lah. Okay, TMB always use like K K U L W or some other names lah. I mean, when you look look at the drawing and the design many times, right? You will be slowly you will be familiar. Okay, this one situated at the LDP. Uh, okay, the the west side. Okay, the LDP, Canada, Jaya, 
uh, what we call this uh, uh, station there. Okay, so you, when you drive, I think it's quite visible. I, really, I can see it from the roadside uh, because it's quite huge. Okay, it's quite huge. You can see there are two transmission tower here. There's one here, there's one here, and then two transmission go into this uh, building. This building house the transformer and the switch gear. But again, we don't see any huge reactor, right? So meaning that there is no SVCV, okay, in this substation. Okay, so yeah, I think this is the direction to Western D, yeah, to, to Western D. This is the direction to one euro. Or oh, I also don't know how we are. I think this is the direction. Sometimes you have to look carefully. Lah. Taman C is here. LDP SS2 is here. Oh, okay. This side is to, to 1U. Okay. And this side is to the Kananda Jaya. So it's between here. Because, yeah, I used to drive along this highway quite many times. So I always notice there is a huge uh, substation here. Okay, but I didn't know it's a KLU, KL uh, uh, West, uh, all right? So now look look back at it. Okay, so we can realize. Okay. So they will give you some idea about, you know, this uh, SVC that is used in our real life, in our city that we are living in, okay? So it can be, in other words, uh, this power electronic thing, right? It can be as small as, on your fingertips, uh, but it can be huge as huge as bigger as you know, like this picture, you know, the the size of a, a person. So I will call this SVC virtual site tour uh, because practically, unless you got permission from TMB, only they will open up and let you, you know, walk around. At, at least you can actually walk around. Of course, they are boundary you cannot cross. Uh. at least you can walk around and up close and see oh, how this SCV actually look like, especially in the control room, right? You can see the switch gear, very important, you know, uh, these are practical, uh, uh, what we call this uh, knowledge. Uh. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right. So now we move on to the last one. Okay. It's what we call the thyristor control series capacitor. Okay, so a TCSC. Now, what we have learned so far is all connect in parallel, right? See, all these are in parallel, parallel, parallel. Okay, but there is also another way of controlling the power flow is to connect it in series. So you connect in series is, okay, usually it will consist of a capacitor and also consists of an inductor. And then of course, as usual, we will have this two thyristor, okay, that will help changing the impedance, okay, the XL, okay, the impedance, all right. So the total impedance is this equation. You have to find the uh, total impedance, okay. Of course, you must know the capacitor, lah, okay, one over two pi F C and the uh, inductor or reactor impedance, which is 2 pi F L. Okay, and then you multiply by the firing angles. All right, and X L firing angles minus, okay, your X C. So how to find X L firing angle, X L firing angles, which is this equation. Okay, which is this equation. Because the capacitor had no control, right? It's either, I mean, it's always, it's on nah, in this case. So it's on. Okay, so you can control only this uh, reactor L. So you control by changing the firing angle of alpha. Okay, the firing angle of alpha. And then by doing that, you are changing this XL, the reactant of this and of course XC is fixed huh, in this case. I mean it actual it also fixed. Okay, so it, it come upon on the design, okay, on the line that you want to, you know, 
you want to do the, uh, this uh, control. Uh. And then, of course, when the XC and XL parallel, you will get the total impedance. So by changing the impedance of the line, you actually control, okay, how much power you can flow through the line. Okay, so that is the, uh, yeah, the basic operation, okay, of the TCSC. So as usual, I said, uh, those with the red color equation, please remember, okay, I will not provide provide these uh, equations uh, in the exam, uh, because it's pretty much fundamental. Uh, of course, this one, you know, just need to memorize it. Okay, so uh, we can test it, okay, by okay doing a very simple, okay, this is a transmission line, okay, you're going to the load, okay, assume the load, uh, is 1000 watt okay oh and then we have a cap ah, in real tcsc there is always a bypass switch ah. that has mean there is always a bypass switch on top ah. there is always a bypass switch bypass switch in the moment you turn this on right it disable this most ah. there's been full power flowing through so we call bypass or sometime or sometimes this one spoil already cannot work properly, right? So you always have a bypass switch. Okay. Uh, you know, to 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 make sure the line is still operational. Mm. And then uh so I just simply throw two value. L is uh, 100 milli Henry and uh, C is uh, 100 micro. So from here, okay, I think I need to switch to my lab. Okay, so I can switch to MATLAB right now. Okay, okay, let's see. Uh, okay, again, you change the reactant, right? You are changing the current that is flowing through the line, and at the same time, it leads to changing of the real and reactive power. So for this is the load, uh, okay? The load, I put 1,000 watt of active load, uh, okay? So this is a pure resistive load. And then in between, there are two, okay, uh, yeah, reactive uh, element. There is 100 micro and 100 milli. Okay, 100 micro, 100 milli. And then uh, we have a switch here. Okay, uh, zero is to open. Okay, uh, one is to bypass. So let's say I just bypass this first. I put a one. As in the switch will close. Uh, okay, we're running the simulation. Okay, so you can see that uh, the real power is 998.7, okay, almost 1000, right? And uh, almost no reactive power, okay? Very, very low reactive power, simply because I'm just transmitting real power. So now what happens is that I set this to zero right now, and then, uh, okay, again, I just play around with the firing angles, okay? So I firing angle is 60 degree, Okay, so you can see that now my real power is only half. Okay, and then I transmitting uh, reactive power negative three uh, four four. That's mean real power going this side, reactive power coming this side. So by changing this uh, firing angle, let's say uh, thirty degree. Okay, you can see that, okay, uh, both also increase, okay, because of the resultant of this parallel, okay, uh, reactants. And I can put like 10 degree. Okay, so you can control this, you know, uh, this power. And, uh, 90. I think 90 is max already. Uh. Okay, I come to 90, right? You can see both also very, very low. Okay, but it's in the uh, forward direction. 6 watt, 
3.171. Okay, so this is how it can be applied. Okay, Malaysia, we don't have any of this TCSC. Yeah? We only have SVC. Okay, <laughs> we don't have any of this. Uh, yeah. Okay, now for this one, right, MATLAB actually have the example already. Lah. You in the help, right, you just type TCSC, right, they actually have one of these very nice examples. Okay, you can open the model. Uh, they actually make this uh, whole thing here, okay, into, you know, uh, this plot. Lah. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so you just type a TCSC. It's just like a Slyco converter they already have built in here. So you no need to create yourself. Okay, it's all there. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, there were two models. One is face model. Okay, we will go for detail model. Okay, then you can click open. Yo, this is by University of Aberdeen, Scotland. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it pops up. How many percent of compensation? Okay, let's see inside. Ah, uh. oh, they already put all this. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can see again now uh, they are they are thyristor, right? And and uh, they are reactor, and of course they add a resistor. Remember, every reactor has an internal resistance. Okay, in practical uh. Okay, my one, I just assume. <laughs> the resistance is zero and uh, they always have a capacitor and they always have this what we call the uh, bypass switches and it is three phase right so they come in three set law mm. you can see the design is actually the same okay of course they have a lot, a lot of different different measurement uh, for for analysis purposes uh. okay and of course these are the firing angle control which i have no idea how this thing works okay uh, the one I show you is much more simpler, but it's for theory, but in a real application, they will have face lock loop and all this, uh, you know, to make sure that it, it firing angle at the same, uh, what we call this, uh, the, the correct angle. Lah. So I just simply run this. Oh, five seconds. I don't know. Is it, this one's very fast or slow. Oh, very slow, very slow. I think this should be the pain scopes. Okay. Yeah, you may need to. <laughs> yeah, the power firing angle. And this one, I also don't know why is this. Ohms. Oh, the total reactant. Yeah, it calculates all this lah. Okay. So again, you can see that they are okay. I'll stop this one. Uh, you know, they are again. They are two source. Okay, you can control how the power want to flow. Okay, in which direction? All right. Okay, so I think we are done with the AC AC controller. Okay. So any questions? No, sir. Okay. Uh, I think for the AC controller, like I said, lah, if we have done AC controller, voltage control, we have done cyclo converter, frequency control, we have done uh, TCR, TSC, and TCSC, okay. Of course, they are more, okay, are more advanced. Uh, what we call this a uh, SVC version of it, uh, 
Okay, because the combination of this is what we call SVC. Uh, the advanced version of it is what we call a statcom. Okay, let me just uh, show you where is the uh, still in Google Map. Uh. Okay. okay, we have this what we call statcom. Okay, STATCOM stands for Static Synchronized Compensator. Okay, it's a power electronic, uh, most fast switching version of the SVC. You see, SVC is controlled by using a thyristor, right? So the STATCOM is controlled using this, uh, what we call this uh, MOSFET. Okay, you can see the all the new statcom, uh, D statcom, static synchronized compensator. Okay, it looks something like that. It's, it still use the bridge. Uh. Okay, it's use use the bridge like a DC to AC uh, converter. The source is the capacitor. Okay, the source capacitor. How much capacitor you, energy you can fit into the grid? So this is statcom. Okay, the problem why statcom is still not very popular is it is very, very expensive. Imagine oh, you need this six bit transistor. Okay, are much more expensive than the six uh, thyristor. Okay, are much more expensive than that. Okay, compare in terms of cost. The advantage is that they have a better control. Okay, the control ability is much more uh, better. And of course, uh, Power electronics still they have some limitation now when it comes to the uh, HV. Uh, you know, as we know that this is mostly applicable in 275 kV, KV or 500 kV. So uh, the limitation is the cost. Or you want to have that high, the transistor is actually cost much more expensive than the thyristor. So it also depends on the country. You know, Malaysia quite straightforward. Uh, our power system, I would say, is not some other country they need to do a lot of power diversion uh, you know dispatch differently okay then they meet, need to have all this advanced thing okay so this one I won't cover but just to let you know there are such thing uh, available out there okay it's called statcom okay static compensator uh, yeah they still have this uh, you know big reactor and of course you, you need a room to house the transistor switching, okay? And uh, MATLAB also have this uh, STATCOM example, uh, okay? They have this uh, STATCOM example here. You can play around. Let's see, uh, STAT. Okay, uh, STATCOM detail model. Okay, we have this uh, statcom. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Q is a reactive power. Okay, that is you know, injected into the transmission line. Okay, we look inside and, oh, oh they're using a thyristor. Uh, this is not a IGBT version. Uh. Oh, wonder. Okay, this is an old type of statcom. Uh. I say the new type, they already use the IGBT. I thought this one is IGBT, but they use a GTO. Okay, GTO means that you can turn off the thyristor version. Okay, thyristor version is not as good as the IGBT version. Ah. All right. Okay. Yeah, we are pretty much uh, done on this. Uh, okay, AC AC converter. Okay, we cover quite a lot. Lah. Too much also no good, right? When come to final exam, so many things to, to study. So limited a bit, so better for you guys. Ah. Okay, always remember, remember the drawing is very, very important. Okay, uh, this one flexible, so it's part under flexible uh, AC transmission system. Uh. SVC is the most commonly used, G 
cheaper and easy to design. Like you don't need to worry about many of the control things. OK, we have the Statcom IGBT base. Uh, we have the TCSE and of course they are the, the rest. OK. Uh, the, the IGBT base of the TCST is UBFC, Unified Power Flow Control. OK. So again, uh, the, the red color one is a thyristor. The black color one is IGBT or I don't think they use MOSFET. Uh, MOSFET usually won't be able to extend that kind of high voltage. OK, and any other different variant which are not common at all. All right, and etc. Hmm. So for this power electronic, I will cover the one that using thyristor. OK. Uh, like I said, uh, the power flow, right? Uh, is very important. OK, for to manage uh, the power system. OK, uh, much more efficiently. OK, we are wasting any power okay because we know that uh, the generator when you turn on right it will generate that amount of power regardless of what people use or not right if no people use the power is generated okay and then no one use it you are wasting your fuel right malaysia we use a lot of gas and we use a lot of coal we burn the coal we run the generator and the generator can generate let's say 250 megawatt and maybe only like 10 megawatt are using a certain area at like certain time. So what to do with the rest of the power? You cannot turn off the generator. Once you turn off, right? It takes, uh, you know, quite some time, you know, an hour or so just to turn on it again. It's just not like our car, we can off and on very easily. Huh? OK, so to turn off, you need to wait to cool down everything. And to turn on, you need to preheat or a lot of things you need to do. OK, so it takes time. That's why they don't. We don't simply turn off our generator. OK, we only turn it off during the schedule maintenance. When you want to do maintenance, OK, you want to do cleaning of the turbine or whatever. So so normally we don't, you know, we don't simply turn it off. So while it's, it's running, OK, of course, the other thing is that you can decrease the fuel intake so that you can slow down uh, or reduce the power generator. OK, so it always has to generate. OK, more than. The demand, OK, if you generate less than the demand, it's going to be black hour. <laughs> so slightly higher than the demand. OK, and we cannot control the user, right? You know, you know where, when you need to use electricity, when you don't want to use. So when this happened, OK, at many of the places, so the dispatch, the control of power flow, how do we deliver? OK, divert this power from one end to another end. OK. So yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, these are all the TMB code. Lah. OK, like Yongping is YGPE, all this. OK, it's always related to the place name. Lah. Mm. OK. Uh, OK, I think. We don't have time already for this, but this is quite straightforward, lah, huh? Okay, to to do that. Just to show how this, uh, as we see, well, I see it's not practical in the sense that uh, I don't include the internal resistance for all the parts. Okay. Okay, so we basically cover uh, the AC AC converters. All right. Uh, next class on world, oh, just. Another week only, oh. okay lah. We should be able to complete the AC to DC converter, okay, in the next class and uh, the next week class. All right. Any questions? Uh, so can you hear my voice? Ah, uh, yes, I can. Oh, so I want to ask you some question, right? Because uh, for the converter, right? If mm. the, uh, if I have converter. Uh, you are breaking out. I can't hear you properly. <laughs> uh, speak again because I can't hear you. You're breaking out just now. You repeat the question. Oh, uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, I dismantled some atrial telecomic component, then there will be there's a component inside AC to uh, AC to DC converter. Mm. Mm, and then uh, when I plug in, I plug because the wire is all done, and then I just plug the switch on, right? The mm. converter have some uh, static sound. Static sound? You mean you yeah. are doing your project or what? Uh, no, I just fixing my some light from my from my dad. Lah. Uh, what light? <laughs> LED light? Uh, fluorescent, fluorescent, some light, fluorescent. Oh, the normal the fluorescent. One, the old, fluorescent. Okay. Yeah, the old ones. The moment you turn on, you hear some sound, right? Oh, like that. Yeah, from the converter. There. That is not a converter or that is a ballast, right? Uh, yeah, it should be. It should be a ballast, lah. Because you see, it's a normal, normal thing. Okay, like if I can show you, is this a uh, what call ballast? How to spell it? Ballast, last, last, ballast. Ah, shit. Forgot how to spell. Okay, I think it's this. Something like that, right? Uh, hello. <laughs> Uh, my one still loading, sir. Uh, not this one because my one is portable. This is for this is for the one uh uh the one on the ceiling, right? No, the one on the ceiling. Oh, yeah, my one, so, my one I facing is the portable one. But inside still got this thing, right? Uh, no, don't have. If have the uh the battery, the lithium battery also. Wow, that is something I don't know already, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I the sound is definitely it is should be some is either the inductor or the small high frequency transformer that is producing the sound. Hmm. So why we producing a humming sound? Ah? Okay, it could be yeah that particular either is your power that feeding in got problem that causing the humming sound overheating. It will overheat the transformer, okay? Or is the high frequency transformer itself already have problem? No? <laughs> uh, mm. uh, okay. Yeah. Speak out later. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The excessive power don't have storage. Uh, yes, we don't have any storage so far. Uh. DMB try to implement battery storage la, uh, slowly because battery are expensive. Uh, that's why we have this problem. No? We don't have storage. Okay. And uh, there are many country actually have made what we call pump hydro storage. That is the most feasible and cheap storage. That means they go up to the hill, they dig a hole. Okay. Then they make a dam, not dam, like it's, a, it's a storage up there. Okay, actually, uh, you know, in the daytime where they have this excessive power, they pump the water from the river on top of the hill, okay, to store the water. Okay, so when they, like I say, like, when they have, like Australia, they have it, Japan, they have a lot because they are mountain country. Okay, they make use of that. That is very much cheaper than battery. So one, they require power in the nighttime, okay, or anytime they want, they just release the power. So the it just it works just like hydro, okay. The only difference is that, uh, you know, the story the the water will eventually drain until it dry, okay. It drain until it dry, then no more power, okay. Then when they are excessive power, it again it pump the water from, uh, the river, back up to the hill, to store, okay. And another advantage of this what we call pump hydro is that pump storage hydro is that. Uh, when rains come, right, you save a lot of power lo, because the rain carry the water and fill up the storage for you for free without using the pump to pump the water up. In fact, this is a very good, uh, currently, la, if you think about battery, battery will age, you know, even lithium iron, right, three or five years gone already. And we are talking about megawatt of power, you know. We are not talking about, like, you know, our handphone. So still, la, what I can say is that, uh, Storage now, the hydro, the pump hydro is still the best. Like, for example, in Para, we have a lot of hill, but I don't know why they don't make use of that. Uh, country like Australia, 
you know, they got a lot of desert one, uh, they actually make use of this method uh, to store the energy. Yeah. Okay, so I hope, yeah, this will answer your question. Uh, three more class to go, I uh, don't worry that I cannot finish. I already skipped a lot of this simulating for you to play around already, but I think it should be okay. Lah. Uh, because we are quite busy now setting out the final question for you guys. You know. Don't worry, question was not designed to fail you all. As long as you study my slide, do the example, you should be able to fast. Ah, okay, oh, 6.30 already. So any questions uh, before we wrap up? Uh, no, sir. Okay, then uh, if no question, then uh, we will end the class today. Okay, thank you.